Black holes don't just devour everything in their path. They might also be time travelers from a universe that came before ours. Yeah, you heard that right. Space just dropped its own version of a prequel series, and it's juicier than a Marvel multiverse leak. So here's the cosmic gossip. Giant black holes, those massive, star-munching beasts, have been spotted lurking at the very start of the universe. According to jaw-dropping new snapshots from the Webb Telescope, these monsters weren't just early risers, they might have shown up before the Big Bang even hit play. Now the scientific community is basically in a group chat meltdown. Are we living in a never-ending loop of universes? Did the Big Bang have a warm-up act? <laughs> Or is the universe pulling one big cosmic prank on us? And at the center of this astronomical drama is one galactic celebrity, Sears 1019, aka the interstellar party crasher no one invited. The supermassive black hole was found sitting comfortably in the heart of a baby galaxy called EGSY8P7, part of the web project hilariously named Sears, because, of course, space has acronyms too. But here's the twist. This black hole is so big, it breaks every scientific rule in the book. With the weight of about 10 million suns and a timestamp of just 570 million years after the Big Bang, this thing is a full-on cosmic anomaly. According to our models, it's the equivalent of finding a full-grown T-Rex inside an egg. Scientists are now left speechless, confused, and mildly panicking, because if black holes like this existed that early, then maybe, just maybe, we've completely misunderstood how the universe began. Okay, let's get real for a second. If our science is even a little bit on the money, this whole thing should not be happening. But that's the big question, isn't it? Can science ever really nail the truth or are we just clever apes with telescopes poking around in the dark, hoping we're getting warmer? Now, the team behind this jaw-dropping discovery didn't mess around. They brought out the big guns, all four of the brand new instruments on the Webb telescope. One hour. That's all it took for Webb to peek into the deep past and say, um, concerned, guys, we've got a problem. At the center of the galaxy, Sears 1019, it found what can only be described as a cosmic heavyweight champ, a supermassive black hole with the mass of 10 million suns. Oh, and this wasn't some sleepy little space town either. This galaxy was busy. Stars were forming, the galactic core was active, and things were popping off, which makes us ask, how the heck did all this happen so soon? We're talking just 570 million years after the Big Bang. That's early, like baby photo early. According to everything we thought we knew, a black hole of that size should have taken way more time to bulk up. The traditional theory says black holes are born from dying stars, then slowly fatten up by eating gas, dust, and anything unlucky enough to pass by. But wait, wasn't the universe still wiping sleep from its eyes during the so-called Dark Ages? That's the era right after the Big Bang where everything was, well, dark and kind of empty. So where did this black hole find enough snacks to become a 10 million solar mass beast? Well, one wild idea scientists are entertaining is the concept of a seed black hole. Think of it like skipping childhood and jumping straight to adulthood. Instead of forming from a collapsed star, this seed might have been born directly from a massive ancient cloud of gas. No star phase, no slow growth, just boom, cosmic beast mode. Imagine black holes not as slow-growing cosmic vacuum cleaners, but as ravenous buffet champions who skipped the appetizer and went straight for the main course. That's the vibe scientists are getting from these early universe black holes. Unlike the usual star-sized black holes we know and love, these monsters might have started off way bigger, already beefed up from birth, giving them a serious head start. And what if these space beasts were gobbling up matter faster than usual? Well, that might explain their astronomical growth spurts. But here's where it gets tricky. Black holes aren't supposed to grow without limits. Enter the Eddington Limit, the universe's built-in cosmic speed bump. Named after British astrophysicist Sir Arthur Eddington, this limit is like a tug-of-war between gravity and radiation. 
When a black hole pulls in gas and dust, the material heats up, glows like a galactic bonfire, and forms an accretion disk. That glowing disk blasts out radiation, pushing stuff away while gravity tries to pull more stuff in. The Eddington limit is the point where those two forces cancel each other out, a cosmic ceasefire. But here's the catch. The supermassive black hole in Sears 1019 clearly didn't get the memo. If it formed so quickly, then either the Eddington limit was ignored, or it's not the universal law we thought it was. And that, my friends, would be a massive headache for astrophysicists. Some researchers are now thinking outside the black hole. One theory? Chaotic accretion. Imagine matter falling in so fast and so randomly that the radiation pressure doesn't even get a chance to push back. Another idea? Cosmic shielding. Thick gas clouds could act like blackout curtains, keeping the radiation from blowing everything away. Then, there's the dramatic-sounding Super Eddington phase, a kind of black hole puberty where, for a short time, these cosmic giants grow at a ridiculous rate, blowing past the usual limits like they're late for a galactic meeting. You can think of the Super Eddington phase like a black hole hitting the gas on a galactic autobahn, speeding up like crazy, then slamming on the brakes before the cosmic police catch up. It's intense, chaotic, and apparently totally possible. But let's take things even further. What if these black holes were hanging around during the dark ages of the universe? Sounds wild, right? Well, buckle up. The dark age in cosmic history wasn't some broody phase where the universe listened to sad music and refused to talk to us. <laughs> it's the time, roughly a billion years after the Big Bang, when light hadn't really made its grand entrance yet. The stars hadn't turned on, quasars were still backstage, and everything was kind of... murky. But here comes Sears 1019, crashing the timeline party. This little galaxy, complete with its very own supermassive black hole, existed just 570 million years after the Big Bang. That means it and its monstrous core were already alive and kicking during what should have been the universe's blackout phase. Wait, what? If that's true, it means the universe might not have lit up all at once. Some neighborhoods in the cosmos probably got the lights turned on earlier than others. Think of it like a cosmic block party where some houses fired up the grill early while others were still asleep. <laughs> but here's the awkward bit. Even if Sears 1019 is small by today's standards, it would have still needed hundreds of millions of years to form, along with its black hole pal. So if we do the math, its actual birth might be knocking right on the Big Bang's front door. And that's making scientists sweat a little. Why? Because the more evidence we gather, the more it feels like we've been duct taping old theories to new data and hoping they stick. Some researchers are now floating ideas like turbocharged galaxy growth or early cosmic boomtowns just to make the timeline work. But maybe, just maybe, our entire Lambda CDM model, that gold standard theory of cosmology, might be wrong. If that's true, it throws everything, the Big Bang, the universe's age, even how it expands into the uncertainty blender. And let's be honest, we still don't even know why black holes like to hang out in the centers of galaxies. It's one of science's most stylish mysteries. Are they the hosts of the party or just the ones who showed up first and refused to leave? Black holes have a gravity game. They're cosmic anchors, dragging stars, gas, and matter into formation, stirring galactic soup like a celestial ladle. Some scientists even think these black holes have always been around, before the Big Bang. Eternal entities, cosmic leftovers from a universe that came before ours. If that's the case, they might not just be the result of creation, they could be the very cause of it. The truth? Our understanding is still wearing training wheels. Discoveries like Sears 1019 remind us that we're just getting started in decoding the universe's secrets. <laughs> Just when we thought Sears 1019 was the biggest cosmic curveball, the universe said, hold my stardust. Another cosmic beast has roared out of the Webb Telescope's deep space vault. A black hole weighing in at a jaw-dropping 800 million solar masses formed just 670 million years after the Big Bang. That's even bigger than our last record-shattering heavyweight, and guess what? This one doesn't even have a proper name yet, because apparently the universe is too busy spawning monsters to stop and label them. 
But wait, because the cosmos is apparently on a roll, another team of researchers just dropped an even bigger bombshell. A black hole clocking in at 1.6 billion solar masses, only 690 million years post-bang. Yes, billion with a B. This discovery is so mind-bending it makes every, well, maybe the Eddington limit can be tweaked theory look like a napkin doodle from a science fair. At this point, astrophysicists are in full-on cosmic crisis mode. Adjust the models? Rethink the laws? Rip up the textbooks? All options are on the table. The more the web looks into the past, the more it seems like the whole Big Bang narrative might need a reboot, or at the very least, a serious update. So, let's pause and ask the question everyone's secretly wondering. What the heck are black holes really? Sure, we've got the scientific lingo. Regions of space-time where gravity is so strong not even light can escape. They're formed from collapsing stars, right? Maybe? Possibly? Kind of? The truth is, while we can detect and model black holes, we still understand frighteningly little about them. They're like the universe's ultimate poker face, dark, mysterious, and holding cards we can't even see. <clears throat> Right now, science classifies black holes into four main types. Stellar black holes. These are your run-of-the-mill, formed from dying stars types, usually between three and a hundred solar masses. They're scattered all over the galaxy like cosmic potholes. Two, supermassive black holes. The big bosses. Found at the center of nearly every galaxy, including our own Milky Way, they weigh in at millions, sometimes billions of solar masses. How they got so huge so fast? Still one of the universe's best-kept secrets. Three, intermediate mass black holes. These elusive middle children range from 100 to 100,000 solar masses. They're rare, hard to find, and could be the missing link between the stellar types and the supermassive beasts. Four, primordial black holes. Now we're venturing into theory land. These hypothetical relics may have formed right after the Big Bang due to tiny fluctuations in density. If they exist, they could hold the key to unlocking the mysteries of dark matter, and they might have been the very seeds that merged to form today's galaxy core giants. Right now, we believe black holes are born when massive stars collapse, or when smaller black holes crash together in cosmic traffic jams, or when a black hole gorges on gas and dust like a gravitational vacuum cleaner. But the early universe was supposed to be too young, too empty, and too chaotic for that kind of growth. So how did these giants form so quickly? Could clouds of gas collapse directly into black holes, skipping the whole star phase entirely? Could they have pulled early stars toward them and shaped galaxies from the inside out? Or are we staring into the shadows of something even bigger? Something that existed before time as we know it. Currently, billions of stars circle galactic centers, which are virtually invariably black holes. The extraordinary forms of spirals, disks, and spheres might be impacted by forces emitted by black holes, quasars, and their interactions. Research regarding the number of galaxies that really formed is still in its early stages. Researchers were particularly interested by the photographs of the first galaxies in the young cosmos because nothing about them had previously been proved. However, what the James Webb Space Telescope really revealed did not meet the researchers' expectations. The universe had a prequel, and James Webb just spilled the cosmic tea. If black holes are sneaking in from a previous reality, the least you can do is subscribe before they suck up this channel too.